Okay, so good morning, all. It's great to have you here. Uh, I'm Einav Livne. I'm the director of the National Erasmus Plus office, and I'm happy to have you in our in our session. Um, before we begin, I would like to give the stage to Ms. Daphna Perry, uh, program officer in the cooperation section of the delegation of the European Union. Hi, Daphna, the floor is yours. Hi, good morning, all. Can you hear me okay? Is this okay? Great. Uh, so, Einav and uh, participants, thank you very much for inviting the EU delegation to the State of Israel to greet you this morning. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to speak to you and to underline the great appreciation that we have for all that you're doing at the National Erasmus Office in Israel. Um, I'll say a couple of words about uh, Erasmus Plus, if that's okay. I'm sorry if you know this, but it's a, just it's a good occasion to to reflect on these uh, great uh, facts. So since its launch in 1987, Erasmus has given more than 10 million people the chance to study, train, volunteer, and gain professional experience abroad. Um, it has long been one of the pillars of the EU-Israel bilateral relationship. And each year, hundreds of students and staff from Israel visit the EU, and hundreds of European students and staff visit Israel as part of the Erasmus Plus programs. But as you all know, Erasmus is um, about much more than just student exchanges. It's also about cooperation, networking, capacity building, and perhaps most importantly about building bridges uh, among countries and among people. That's why we welcome the efforts of the program to expand its reach to more higher education institutions, as well as civil society organizations, and aim for better inclusion and better diverse diversity. And as you all know, academia and civil society are linked in various ways. And it's our experience that collaborations between organizations from these two sectors can bring about better education, innovation, and human and social development. So it's great to see how many organizations here today uh, share this perspective with us. And I hope you'll find this partner search session useful in facilitating collaborations between organizations and between sectors and between countries with the support of Erasmus Plus. We're looking forward to seeing the fruits of these collaborations in the upcoming months and years. And I also want to congratulate the National Erasmus Plus Office in Israel for its excellent work and the great projects that it's undertaking. I'd like to commend you once again for your important work and wish you a fruitful and engaging meeting. Thank you so much, uh, Daphna, and thank you for this uh, wonderful partnership and collaboration with the EU delegation was very supportive of Israel in general and the Erasmus Plus program, so thank you so much. And uh, now we're going to have, a, I'm going to present to you a short presentation on uh, Erasmus Plus in Israel, just to be on the same page uh, all together on the open calls that are still open. And the, then we'll proceed to the partner search presentations, which is why you're all here, of course, uh, just so we're all on the same page. So. Can you see my slide? Yeah, okay, great. So, um, one second, yeah. Okay, so as Daphna said, Erasmus Plus is the flag. She, she presented it even much better than this very short um, slide, but the, it's the EU flagship program for education, training, youth and sports. Um, and it's fun, it funds with billions of euros uh, collaboration in higher education, youth, and 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 sports and training and also vet something that's relatively new here in Israel, uh, but not in Erasmus, but not new to Erasmus, and uh, that's all funded by by the European Union. Before we dive in, of course, uh, I we can't just uh, continue without saying a few words of condolences to all our colleagues uh, in these very hard times that uh, we're facing, and hope that uh, better times will be coming soon. Uh, regarding everyone that's been afflicted by this war and, of course, the hostages that are still in Gaza. Okay, so um, strange twist, but uh, uh, 
on the same note, I want to congratulate um, the uh, awarded projects of Erasmus Plus uh, for 2023 uh, for their wonderful ideas, initiatives, and innovative collaborations. Mm -hmm. uh, your success is our success, and I hope that all of your project would be very well disseminated in Israel and impact other organizations here as well. So what are the Erasmus Plus activities open to Israel? Of course, we have the mobility. We're, here we discuss youth mobility, but also ICM, international credit mobility. Uh, we have projects, which I will get into shortly. Uh, we have uh, Jean Monet. Uh, joint master's degrees, which Israel has had a lot of success in recent years. Uh, you have all the youth actions that are open to Israel. And Israel also has the Erasmus Plus uh, HERE team, Higher Education Reform Experts team. I'll say a few words about that team at the end of the, this presentation. So Erasmus is actually... Uh, collaboration between the countries that you see in dark blue and the countries in light blue, of course, also inter-European collaboration, but not only. So you can see Israel here in light blue. So we're not, uh, as opposed to Horizon, we're not an associated country in Erasmus, we're a non-associated country, okay? But there are still a lot of calls that are open to Israel. And, uh, and the EU uh, member states are uh, our associated countries, and we have six more associated countries, which are North Macedonia, Iceland, Liechtenstein, Norway, Turkey, and Serbia. So Israel is under uh, region three, the southern Mediterranean region. Here you can see all of the regions, right? And here you can see the list of lists of countries that are within our region, okay? Um... So just going back for one second, um, when we're talking about capacity building projects, uh, our goal is that the knowledge would be transferred from EU, uh, from the member and associated countries to Israel. But when we're talking about other projects, like inter-European projects, like cooperation partnerships or alliances for innovation, there the Israeli partner can really give an added value and then the knowledge goes the other way. So it really depends on the call that we're focusing on. But of course, any collaboration, there is a reciprocation. We learn from each other. That's that's part of the values of Erasmus Plus. So there are four horizontal aspects uh, that need to be taken into account when we're having any sort of Erasmus Plus collaboration, regardless of the project or the call. So there is the issue of inclusion, inclusion and diversity environmental sustainability, the digital dimension, we're talking about innovation and digitalization, digital skills, um, computerizing of, of actions, and uh, common values, civil, civic engagement and participation. Here we're talking about values of democracy, equity, and, and other uh, values that of course we have in common with our EU counterparts. So open calls, and their budget within our region, right? We're discussing region three. So CBVET is open in Israel. It's relative. It's a relatively new call. In the past, it, it hasn't been open to Israel. It was open only for the Western yeah. Balkans. And slowly and gradually, more and more organizations uh, are, are submitting projects together uh, for CBVET. Um, you can see that um, the amount that's allocated to our budget is 4 million euros this year only. We're talking just this year. Uh, notice that there has been a change that cross-regional applications are not eligible anymore. So if we, we have now a project that's been awarded together with Kosovo. And if that same project would be submitted now, it, wouldn't, it would be ineligible, okay? Because it has to be uh, a national or a regional project. It can't be a cross-regional project, okay? Um, CBHE, Capacity Building in Higher Education. So there's a larger sum, uh, but it's a more competitive uh, call. You can see that in CBVET in Israel, we've had 67% success rate of applications, which is very high. In CBHE, it's a bit lower. We're talking 17%. Uh, there's a new uh, budget that's just for cross-regional funds. 
that way it's managed better by this is an internal management tool for uh the the agency that's uh responsible for Erasmus plus for managing Erasmus plus so there's cross regional funds up to almost 10 million euros so if we go down uh CBY capacity building in youth we've had a very high success rate here in Israel as well seven sixty seven percent success rate but uh you should notice and and, and a generous uh, amount was allocated for that too almost like nine it was a bit more than nine million euros this year please notice that this is only for regional collaboration projects that means that it has to be with another country within our region uh for example morocco or egypt or jordan so that's something to take into account that's that's that could be a challenge uh, but if this is your field, then it could be an incentive for you. And of course, we have other other projects that we have a hundred percent success rate. Okay, we have the virtual exchanges uh, with five with almost six million euros budget allocated. Uh, by the way, this also needs to be um, a regional collaboration. The uh, the virtual exchange. We have the. EMJM, the Erasmus Mundus Joint Master's Degrees, which, which you can see is a much more general, a generous, but yet a global budget. Okay, so it's competitive. It's based on the innovation of the projects. It, it doesn't matter which country you come from. It matters uh, the quality of your application and your joint master's degree. Israel has had a lot of success in EMJM. We've just recently had the Bangilan Coordinated Neu Neurodata uh, EMJM and uh, recently uh, partners from Israel have won five more EMJM proposals. So I encourage you to be interested and take part in EMJM, which is uh, the flagship within a flagship of Erasmus Plus. And of course, we have the Jean Monnet budget, which uh, focuses on the studies of the European Union in different fields. It can be political, it can be social science, it could be um, economical, it can be policy, it can refer to uh, culture and different aspects of European Union studies. And of course, uh, there are inter-European uh, calls that are not mentioned here, such as cooperation partnerships, alliances for innovation, and other projects that Israel, of course, can take part in, uh, but as an associated partner, upon proving an essential added value. And a lot of Israeli organizations have that added value in different fields. I hope some of the partners that will be talking later on could, could show you their specific added values and, uh, and, uh, and bring more collaboration. So this is for newcomers mostly, but it's something that everyone needs to bear in mind. There is a validation process overview to be part of the Erasmus Plus family, uh, you can say. So to take part in these projects and to compete, you need to register in the funding and tender portal. We can send you the link, of course. Everyone that has registered to um, this meeting will get a summary email and we'll send you all the relevant links. And also at the end of this presentation, which you will also get, is the link to the top, to the funding and tender uh, portal. You need to register as an organization. You, there's a process of verification and validation. You need to submit all sorts of uh, documents proving your, your legal entity and things uh, uh, relevant in that field. And then later on, you need to appoint a leer. A leer is a legal representative that manages the project for you. So it takes time because first you need to have a signature authority and then he needs to appoint the leer. It's a process. It's not rocket science, but it takes time. So that's why I recommend you to start start doing it. Uh, you get your, your number, your peak it's called. You get your number, it's like your ID in the system. It's not validated yet. Once you get your number, you can take part in proposals and applications. But later on, when you get the grant, you need to make sure that you're verified and that your leer is appointed. So you have almost a full year to, to take care of it, okay? So it's something I recommend people start doing right now because we did have a partner that has won a grant and i know that this it, it was unfortunately it was in october november and you know it was a hard time uh 
here. So uh, they didn't appoint their leader on time and they didn't take part in the project. They were dismissed from the project. And that's just a shame. They've done all the work, all the application and uh, and still didn't receive uh, the grant at the end of the day. So just a word about our Higher Education Reform Experts Forum. Uh, we have a wonderful forum of experts that are dealing with issues of greening in higher education and employability. Uh, and uh, and uh, we're holding a conference on the 17th of March here in Israel. We're bringing in an expert on um, uh, lowering emissions on green campus, uh, uh, which is going to be a national event uh, with, uh, with the head of the CHE PBC speaking. And of course, a lot of uh, uh, learning, peer-to-peer -peer learning and, and a lot of information. So you're all welcome to register once we publish uh, the Save the Day. And also on April, we're gonna have a, a conference on promoting graduate employability, which I'm sure could be relevant to many of you. So, here I put down some partner search tools that could be relevant for many of you. Um, there is, of course, the is. Uh, uh, we'll send now a link to the partner search database. If there are colleagues here that are not from Israel, but from other places in the world and are looking for partners in Israel, we do have a database. Uh, it's on our website. We'll send you the link to register. And you can register yourself, uh, information about your institutions, and the type of collaboration you're looking for. And then uh, Israeli partners can contact you and uh, make offers. So it's a very uh, good tool also for Israeli partners that are look looking for partners abroad. You could go in the tool and find the contact details of people that are specifically looking for collaborations with Israel. So we're going to send the link right now. And uh, Inbal will send it. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, at CAS partner search uh, that you can uh, look into in, in the funding and tender portal that you need to sign up to. There is a place where you have partner search announcements under different calls. So that's a very dedicated, specific announcement to a specific call. You can publish announcement there or you can go over the announcements that were published and uh, and uh, and uh, and see if there's something relevant for you. There's the Erasmus Project Results platform where you can see successful projects that have been awarded. This is useful because one, you can be inspired from the different projects, and two, you can find people that have already that have experience in Erasmus and might be interested in having another project in the same thematic field or with the relevant experience. You can contact them. There's their, their contact details, which is very useful. There's the national agencies, just like we are the National Erasmus Plus office in Israel. There are national agencies of Erasmus Plus uh, in the different EU countries uh, that you can contact them. They have contact points for youth, for higher education, and for different fields. And there are more networks, uh, European networks, thematic networks that you can take part in. Here are some examples, but there are much, much more. So for further information, you're welcome to of course, go to our website, the National Erasmus Plus website, where you have our information day that we've had about a month ago with all the info sessions on the different calls. And you can see also at CAS info days, which are global info days that have been recorded and, uh, and see also the Israeli projects that have taken part here in Israel. So thank you so much for your time. And uh, we have uh, time for a few questions if anyone wants to to ask anything because I've been talking a lot. Yeah, can I ask a question? Please? Yes, of course. Um, my question is, if we are collaborating with a European organization, who does the actual um, form sending to Erasmus Plus if they are the host and we are the hosties? So do we fill out the form or do they or do both of us? Oh, that's that's a wonderful question. That's actually a question that re, that's in regards to uh, coordination. So I want to show you the slide again because I think it would make it much, much clearer. So let me just for one second reshare the slide. Uh, where is it? Okay, there it is. Um, 
wait one sec sorry so it's a question of coordination as a matter of fact uh okay here we are okay so you can see the different calls that are open and then what you ask is who's the who is the person that's submitting and managing Okay, so it, so for example, it's not even mentioned here, but there is the mobility aspect. These are projects, but we're talking when we're talking mobility, right? And mobility is mostly in Israel ICM, International Credit Mobility, where you host students or you send students and staff abroad. Uh, the coordinator is the uh, European or the the associated country. It's not necessarily the European country, but the 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 EU or associated country of Erasmus, they're the ones that submits the uh, the application to their national agencies. And they're the, and they're the ones uh, managing the projects, managing the grants and reporting back to, to the national agencies. Actually, the only instance where you can uh, be a coordinator, uh, no, it's not the only one, but there are several ones that where you can be, okay? So CB vet, the coordinator needs to be on the on the uh, associated country side, so not the Israeli side. In CBHE, capacity building in higher education, we can also be coordinators, and there are at least fifteen projects that have been have won and been coordinated by an Israeli partner, which is very outstand uh, outstanding because um, Israel is is really likes to, like Israeli partners are very good coordinators. I can say that from my experience. And capacity building youth again only the European side can be the coordinator, and uh, but but in other fields it's not necessarily like that. I mean EMJ, JM, EMD, DM, Jean Monet is of course it's not not it's not bilateral. So of course you're the coordinator of your own project. So it really depends on the call. I hope I answered your question, and if not, you can yeah I have okay great. Thank you. For that question, only the CBAG it it's can a possibility to be a coordinator, Israeli coordinator. Uh, when you're talking about capacity building, then only CBAG. The other capacity building project, uh, the coordinator needs to be the non the associated country side. So it's a EU member state or an associated country to Erasmus. But for example, in joint master's degrees, Barilan is the coordinator. So there are calls where not only CBHE, but there are other calls where uh, Israel can be a coordinator. It really depends on the call. So we have a dear friend that has joined us now, uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Lida Kita. Uh, senior human capital development expert uh, on social inclusion, she, who is a country liaison for Israel on the in the ETF European Training Foundation. So I'd like to take advantage of the last three minutes we have we have before the presentations and ask Lida to say a few welcoming words. So Lida, if you morning, can hear me. Good morning. Sorry, because in my calendar it was at eleven o'clock. It's converted. <laughs> That's why. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so. I think uh, good morning, everybody, and it's great to have this big number and uh, looking uh, forward to oh, for all the exchanges. And uh, as you know, we are the because we have had a lot of discussions with different groups. We have an EU agency and uh, based here in uh, Turin, and we work with the countries. and Israel is one of the countries, and uh, we have had many sessions on the Erasmus uh, and also for the partnership. So. You have the presentation. I don't want to bore people what we do, where we focus, and also because the EU delegation is here. And uh, good morning, uh, Daphna, and uh, all is explained. Is uh, We are here to support you for any partnerships that you want, depending on the areas that the partners want to cooperate and to engage. And uh, with the presentation, you will share where all the areas that we work with the Israeli counterparts and how we support also their uh, kind of focusing their proposals and find uh, participants for uh, the Erasmus uh, cooperation. But if you have any questions, we are here to, to answer and uh, for whatever. We also say that Israel is very active also in the centers of that excellence. And it's a big participation and it's much appreciated the knowledge and the partnerships that the Israeli partners bring 
in their innovative learning and uh, teaching uh, methods, and also working with the private sector for the skills uh, agenda. And uh, a lot of other uh, partner countries that EDF works with would like to uh, participate and to also design uh, joint uh, actions, especially also for the capacity building in uh, VET. So I stop here and again, apologies for the coming late. Thank you. Thank you, Lida. Thank you for your consistent presence in all our events and for your support in collaboration with Israel. We really, really appreciate it and appreciate you coming today and saying a few words. And now I would like to give the stage to the actual wonderful organizations that are looking for partners. I hope that it would be very fruitful for, for you all. And uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Carlos Alberto for, I hope I'm saying it correctly, I'm sorry if not, Fonse, Fonseca from uh, Universidad uh, Autonoma Gabriel René Moreno uh, from Bolivia. I hope I'm saying it correctly, but I'm sure you will present yourself and I apologize. Uh, so the floor is yours. Uh, thank you so much. Good morning to everybody. Uh, I would like to present a proposal. Uh, can I share the, the screen? Yes. Uh, okay. Can you see the presentation, please? Uh, yes, but maybe, yes, yes. Perfect. Okay. Well, uh, uh, I would like to start by uh, saying thank you to your organization, the National Erasmus Plus representative in Israel, no, uh, Eina and Imbar. They are always sending me emails for participating in some sessions, and we are really interested in uh, working with uh, some institution in Israel. That's why. Uh, I would like to present this proposal. And this proposal is about uh, digital literacy for high school students. Uh, my name is Carlos Alberto Fonseca. Uh, I work at Gabriel René Moreno University. Um, I would like to, uh, let me introduce some information about my country. It's a Bolivia overview. Uh, Bolivia is located in South America, as you can see in the map. The population is around 12 million. Uh, the official languages are Spanish, uh, Quechua, Aymara, and Guarani, and other indigenous languages. And um, the geographic zones, uh, we have uh, different geographic zones, no? high plateau, valleys, and tropical lowlands. The education system in Bolivia, according to the law issued in 2010, we have a regular education, alternative and special education. And here, higher vocational education and training system, we have teacher education, technical education, artistic education, and university education. We want to focus on technical education. Um, this uh, system consists of training of general technical and humanistic knowledge. And as you can see here, uh, we have uh, project planning and management, technical drawing, industrial design, research, creativity, entrepreneurship, industrial safety, leadership, general basic accounting, lower law, information and communication technologies, cost calculation and others. But we have a, a, a big problem here with the system. The majority of school teachers in Bolivia have not been trained to teach technical education. That's why we are uh, with this proposal because uh, there are a lot of students who uh, can take advantage of, of this uh, educational system. Um, here we have some information about uh, students. We are working here in Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is a department. Bolivia has nine departments. Uh, we are here in this map, as you can see, the, the green color. Um, according to this information, we have students from uh, primary school and secondary school. We would like to work with students from the last year. That means the students who are finishing schools. 
and they are at least uh, 4,000 students. But according to the proposal, we have to see the, the scope to work with some pilots. Um, it's according to, to the plan, according to the, the conditions, we have to work with them. Uh, about the proposal, the project title is Digital Literacy Program for Secondary School Students. The objectives are to train high school students in the use of office tool and social networks, bridging the digital divide between rural and urban students, develop 21st century digital skills, encourage online learning, and promote entrepreneurship. For implementing this process, uh, here we have some information about the conditions. For example, what type of resources do we have as an institution? Uh, first, we have a proposal to develop a project or a program. We have a course proposal, we have human resources, we have some computer centers, and we have a stakeholders to reach uh, this proposal and to reach a project. Uh, what type of support do we need from a partner institution? First, we would like to be part of a consortium of operating institutions. Uh, we need to know some benchmarkings about the syllables, how to work with this uh, kind of project. Uh, we need training for human resources, the staff, the teachers. We need assessment. Uh, we need some equipment. And uh, above all, we need an agreement. Uh, not only with the uh, local and regional authorities, but with international uh, institutions. That's why we are uh, here in this session looking for cooperation, and we would like to give the opportunity, the chance to uh, a lot of students who don't have the appropriate uh, condition no, to, to enter into the digital uh, world. Thank you so much. It's a brief presentation. Uh, I hope you could uh, understand what we are uh, looking for. And uh, uh, we would like to work with this type of project with, with you. Thank you so much. Hey, Nav, you are, you are in mute. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know, Ruti. So I want to say again, because I wasn't heard. Thank you, Carla, so much for your presentation. It was very uh, precise. And I, I, I invite you to write your email here in the chat. And also we'll share it uh, with all the participants uh, so that they can contact you. Um, so thank you very, very much. And uh, without further ado, I would like to invite from Bangalore University, Mr. Daniel Chauvar, Senior Advisor for Internationalization and Erasmus Plus Institutional Coordinator. The floor is yours. Thank you. I, there was a request right before. Thank you, Anna, right for that beautiful intro. But uh, there was a request that the folks from Jerusalem Academy for Music and Dance go before me. Thank Sarah, you, is yes. that, my yes, pleasure. Yes, okay, true. no problem. So, for some anyway, reason, go ahead. I, I thought like there was there was this request, but then when in my printed paper, you're before her, so I didn't argue with the paper. So yeah, no I'm problem. sorry. Barilan is next. So okay. from the Jer Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. Uh, Sarah Metzer Golan, head of the International Relations Office. Floor is yours. <laughs> thank you, Enav, and thank you very much, Daniel, <laughs> for considering this. I need to run into another meeting. So nice to meet you, uh, everybody, and thank you so much for inviting and giving this stage for us, for art. We are used to be on stage uh, always to present ourselves. So the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance just celebrated this year, 90 years of education, technology, and um, performance innovation. Uh, we educate around 800 students every year uh, in different uh, levels of degrees, first degree, second degree, master degree, and a PhD, a joint PhD with the Hebrew University. Uh, we are divided around um, in three faculties, the performing arts faculty, which includes everything, what is classical music. The second uh, largest faculty is the cross-disciplinary music which is everything which is not classical, meaning 
composition for media, for movies, jingles, for radio, jazz, um, traditional Arabic music, uh, pop um, and uh, rock and musicals. And the last but not least, the dance faculty, which has inside not only the classical dance, the ballet, but also contemporary movement dance. Um, we have, uh, let's say, a movement of, of uh, students for exchanges around 15 to 17 each semester on both sides. So ours going to different uh, places in Europe uh, and not only, and others coming to us. We have the highest percentage of international students studying for degrees into uh, um, our uh, system in our school from five to seven percent, which is much above the average uh, in Israel. Um, and uh, in a matter of fact, we are looking for partners uh, all over the world. And of course, Europe is very, very interesting for us in order to develop to them in, uh, exactly what, in a matter of fact, Alberto said, uh, Fonseca, that you don't have maybe this field, but we do train teachers. This is our thing to train teachers for music, for being artist makers in the society, to make them to teach uh, uh, little children that will become later students and musicians and artists because the spiritual food that we are providing is not less important than the caloric food that we need to eat every day in order to, you know, to, um, to live and to sustain ourselves. So um, I can tell you a uh, last uh, thing that when I arrived to the Academy uh, four years ago, we used to have around 12 agreements. Today we have around 58. Uh, part of these uh, are bilateral, part of these are Erasmus. We are doing very interesting projects as well in the world, for example, jazz in Mongolia, modern dance in Iceland and in Mazatlan, Mexico. Um, we are looking for interesting things and interesting partners and not to be let always out of the graph as usual culture and arts are because it's not you know, chemistry, biology, agriculture, and many other important things as the world needs to eat today, but also arts and culture are very, very important. So I will write down my email. You are um, uh, um, free to, to send me emails to join other partners that you have in this field. And thank you very, very much again, Inav. And thank you, Daniel, for letting me <laughs> be before you. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Thank you Daniel. No problem. And now, what you've been waiting for, <laughs> joking, uh, from Barilan University, um, Daniel Cheval, Senior Advisor for Internationalization and Erasmus Plus Institutional Coordinator. Flores thank was. you, thank you. And it's definitely, it's always better to dance first. Can I have the sh screen share or? Yes, you can. Okay. Can everyone see the presentation then? I don't think I have it. Screen share. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, and now I have to, there we go. Okay. So uh, I will talk a little bit from the slides, but I would prefer to talk more off the slides. And I can see based on the uh, names of the participants that it seems that we're mostly an Israeli group which is just as good. So I've adjusted my statements a bit for anyone that doesn't know Bar Ilan University on this call. So we are one of the comprehensive universities within Israel. Uh, I think we count it technically as seven comprehensive or now eight comprehensive, but we are a comprehensive university. I like to tell people, you know, we're the closest university to the airport. Um, but before I get into anything else about Bar Ilan, I will of course say what is on our minds, which is that Israel is filled with incredible higher education institutions. Um, and so I never really like to talk about what we do great because the chances are somebody else also does it great as well. There are a few things we don't do, of course, like music and dance. Um, so I won't talk about those at all. Um, but yes, so uh, we are a comprehensive institution, around 17,000 students, 700 faculty, almost a thousand international students. Again, these numbers kind of go and come. 
What's important, of course, is that we, we do cover all of the, the major faculties. So we're capable of cooperating in, in virtually every area. Um, even the specific matters that we don't do, uh, we often can have researchers and or departments that are relevant to those areas. We've been very active in Erasmus over the past 10 years, I should say, over 90 international credit mobility partners, 26 countries, over 2,500 participants. As you heard earlier, so we have two Erasmus Mundus Joint Masters programs, one of which we serve as the coordinator for. Um, uh, over the years, we've been involved in five capacity building projects that were successful in their acceptance. We have one Jean Monnet Center for Excellence and uh, two strategic partnership projects. Um, these are the specifics about our joint master's programs. So especially for sending students, uh, I wanted to take in a moment, of course, out to essentially promote these programs because these are now European degrees that all students are eligible to apply for and receive funding for. So they are some of the best pat platforms for partnership in the sense that the two Erasmus Mundus joint masters that we coordinate and or are a part of um, are eligible to all students. And one is in chemistry informatics, um, which is a combination of chemistry and data science. And the other one is in brain and data science, and that's called neurodata. Um, so if you haven't heard about those projects and you'd like to know more uh, for your um, emerging graduate students, um, please be in touch with me and uh, we can send you more information about those very exciting European degree programs. Um, we've been involved in five capacity projects, as I said, uh, five successfully accepted capacity projects. And that is kind of the focus of my talk now for the next two minutes that I have, which is, what are we particularly interested in? So I would say that talking to an Israeli, um, largely Israeli cohort like this, I would definitely emphasize the increase in the involvement in KA2 programming, capacity building, CBVET, and to a certain extent, even cooperation project partnerships, although I know that that doesn't necessarily include two institutions. So I'll just say, we're currently working on two capacity projects, from, for which we already have a sufficient Israeli consortium. Uh, so we already have three or four partners from Israel. Um, so from my vantage point as the Erasmus coordinator for Barilan, you know, those, those two projects were initiated by, by Barilan. We, we came up with the idea, we found the partners in Europe and now we've found the partners in Israel, but we are very eager um, to be, so to speak, told about projects that you're working on um, we're very content with taking a small role or a larger role, depending on the need of the project, but we are very, very interested. We have many, many departments and institutes that are, that are eager to work on capacity projects in a more active way. We see this as a crucial part of our internationalization. Um, we now have a, a very, very strong working relationship with our, our research authority here at the university to manage these projects. And, um, so I will just simply close, even though I have plenty of other slides, um, I will just simply close on that point, which is that we, we are very interested in capacity building projects of all kinds. So if you are working on any projects and you are finding that maybe, yeah, maybe we do need one more partner and maybe we do need one more university perhaps, um, uh, we always have areas in which we need to build our capacity, um, especially as it relates to the development of the Bologna Accords and, and the European um, practices uh, in general. So that is going to be all I will say this morning. So good luck to all of you that are applying to projects and we hope we can join you in them. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much. And um, I want to invite uh, from El Qasami Academic College, Leanne Awasat Mawasi. I hope I said it correctly, Coordinator of International Academic Relations. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, enough for your intro. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, of course. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so to start, first of all, um, uh, my name is Layan. I'm going to introduce Al-Qasim Academic College to you. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
um, we want to explore uh, international collaboration through Erasmus+. Uh, we are very interested in um, um, developing and um, sharing or collaborating with capacity building projects. Um, I wanted to share with you al Qasimi at a glance. Uh, so it's a short video I'm going to share. Be sure to share the audio too. Yeah. But, but uh, Leanne, we only okay. see the uh the presentation. Okay. okay. You need to reshare the uh, yeah. Um. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Kasumi Academy College is regarded as a prominent and leading institution of teacher education. al qasimi was primarily established in 1989 as an institution for Islamic studies. In 2002, the college was accredited by the Council of Higher Education in Israel to award a BED degree in different fields. In 2010, the college was granted the right to award the MED degree, followed by MTeach degree in 2017. al Qasimi has a culture of research and technology which is committed to the dissemination of scientific and educational knowledge and the sustainability of academic excellence and innovation to better serve its students, faculty members, as well as the global community. The college programs include theories of teaching, research and practice with special emphasis on leadership and innovation in the classroom.
peer-review journals. Al-Qasimi International peer-review journals publish articles and scientific papers in different disciplines. Al-Qasimi Academy College, your life-changing experience. Inspiration, innovation, application. Okay, that was for the video. Um, can you see my screen, um, the presentation now? We see the video. Okay, hold on. Okay, um, so I think the video was um, um, thorough about uh, explaining about al Qasimi. We are very interested in expanding our uh, connection globally and locally. Um, we have, um, we are um, currently participating in a capacity building program, but we would also like to um, uh, collaborate on other uh, capacity building programs. So if anyone has um, a program that would like a, a new partner, or if you'd like help in anything, we would be very glad with that. Um, we are looking for uh, partners to collaborate and everything related to education, digital learning, integrating EI in teaching, MOOC courses, science and technology education. Um, we have um, um, we have uh, lecturers who are um, um, who specialize in these uh, fields. So we would very much like to have partners uh, in these fields. And that would be all. I would be very happy to contact with the everyone. So this is my email if you'd like to contact us regarding anything. Thank you. Thank you, Layan. Thank you. And you can also write your email in the chat, but we'll also, of course, share it uh, in our uh, summary uh, email. Thank you so much. And uh, I encourage uh, everyone to, to collaborate and take part with this wonderful partner. And now I want to invite from the Hebrew University, Dr. Osnat Kohan, Director of, U of the Youth Division. Okay, now can you hear me? Yes. And let's see what you can see. Can you see my presentation as well? Yes. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Nice to meet you all. My name is Usnat Cohen and I am the head of the Hebrew University Youth Division. And um, I'm not going to tell you about the Hebrew University. I was jumping into our division, but obviously we sit in Jerusalem and we are one of the most famous university in Israel and Barilan uh, uh, presenters uh, mentioned before that we have few uh, famous and well-known university here in Israel. Um, so I'm going to jump into what we're doing. So the Hebrew University Youth Division strives to promote academic excellence in early ages, uh, teens. So we nurture science and technology leadership and we strengthen the involvement of youth in the academic world. Um, we're speaking about 85,000 visitors per year in the different campuses. Um, and which most of them are high school, either high school or junior high school uh, students. So when I'm speaking about students, I'm speaking about those school students uh, most of the time. 22,000 pupils visit our teaching labs uh, as part of their school curriculum uh, with their STEM teachers. So we actually have uh, not virtual, but real labs in the campus, chemistry, biology, physics, and many others. Uh, we offer formal STEM activities as well as informal uh, enrichment uh, STEM education. So we work during school hours and also after school uh, and during holidays uh, with different formats. Um, about 800 participants, our few years long program for highly motivated, talented high school student. Um, and not only super talented teens participated our programs, we also offer programs for unique or specific population tailor-made to their needs and to their background. Populace, population such as East Jerusalem students or ultra-Orthodox uh, from Yeshiva and Ulpana. Uh, um, we have 
about 160 master and PhD student work as mentor uh, at the different program or as lab instructors. Uh, these students serve as a role model um, for these uh, young enthusiastic teens. And this is, I think, the most uh, important part, the, the, the informal on the, the interaction uh, between this high school and junior high school student with the real student. Uh, which doing research in different fields. So what we actually seek for, uh, we the potential co collaboration or partnerships that we can think about is uh, in the area of social responsibility of higher education, a higher education institution, outreach to communities, uh, which was known as science in society, science for society in previous uh, um, um, Erasmus, um, project, initiative promoting equal opportunities to acquire higher education, either for girls, for specific population. Um, you can think about many other uh, pre-academic programs, which actually that's what we are doing. Um, education or encouraging social activism, uh, nurture responsible, engage citizens with critical thinking and other skills. Uh, science as the bridge between communities in conflict zone or between populations. We do a lot of work uh, through sciences. Cultivate 21st century skills in pupils. I think um, Carlos was also mentioned this 21st uh, skills, set of skills which we understand now it's uh, most important for a future and uh, uh, fruitful citizens. Um, international contest for pupils, for high school students. Um, ideas can be uh, international youth camps, exchange a high school student between different countries, uh, building a program with the exchange uh, camps, uh, a staff, staff uh, exchange, uh, educator, uh, mutual learning, sharing experience, building together project and and working and working uh, in a research project with this high school student uh, as a mutual project uh, year long and also with, uh, it can be combined year long and also with uh, camps and, and real meeting during uh, vacations. We can bring to, to the partnership our over 40 years of experience and legacy in the field of STEM education. Uh, and obviously our uh, national and international networking. Uh, national, I can uh, mention the other uh, higher education institution in Israel, which also have a youth department as the one that I'm running and NGOs, which we have many of those in Israel, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Science and Technology and other ministries as well, teacher organization and many more. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much uh, to Dr. Cohen. And now we're going to start the second session, uh, second sessions of our day uh, with non-higher education institutions, uh, but uh, from organizations from civil society and also municipal stakeholders. So let's start with the municipality of Eilat. I'd like to invite Salome Wow, I don't know. I, I'm going to say it, but I'm going to say it wrong. Okay, but Salome uh, Zeibert uh, from Elat Environmental Unit. Did I say it correctly? I'm curious now. Yes. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Salome and I'm here with uh, Adas. We both work at the Elat Elot Environmental Unit. Adas is our environmental education coordinator, and I'm Salome, and I work on the European Union projects we have at the municipality of Elat. Uh, for the few that are not from Israel, Elat is a small city by the Red Sea at the very south of Israel, and we name our presentation Elat, let's build a brighter future together, because we want to do more projects with youth, mainly from uh, high schools, to bring them more opportunities and build together a brighter future for, for the city. So let's start. At the municipality of Elat, 
So we have a great experience with uh, European funded projects. We've been uh, working on this topic for more than a decade. As you can see, we have already uh, a fair list of horizon projects. It means that we work on energy, mobility, water issues in the city. And we want to uh, connect these projects more and more with uh, education. That's why we started to work on uh, Erasmus. We have uh, one uh, a uh, project uh, linked to Erasmus where we are an external partners and we are learning from it. But our goal is really to connect all the aspects uh, Aina have mentioned before, the uh, environmental system, sustainability to education and improve our education system uh, in that informal education, formal education. And you can see uh, our team in the screen uh, as well. And we are also very proud to be part of the uh, 112 mission cities uh, uh, in Europe. It means that we have pledged to be climate neutral by 2030. So we need uh, everyone on board, including the youth. So you may ask yourself what we're doing uh, with education in Elad. So thanks to ADAS, we have a strong cooperation uh, with schools, with 13 schools in Elad, including high school. We work on place-based education, and we are also lucky to work with a strong network of NGOs and public organizations, helping us in our education and awareness activities. Here you can see an escape uh, game that was created by the uh, Elad Elot uh, Renewable Energy Initiatives that we are doing with teachers. We also work with the RedMed Coalition to talk about all the impact uh, on the coral reefs and also ocean literacy. This is a workshop led by uh, uh, youth from the uh, Society for the Protection of Nature in Israel. And we are also very proud to have youth-led initiatives like the Gulf Rangers who uh, work uh, hard to try to reduce the amount of disposables we people use in Elat and protect uh, the ocean. So with Erasmus, we are looking to connect better the youth to today's challenges. We are interested in virtual exchanges, capacity building, partnerships for cooperation and mobility for youth. And after talking with our teachers or schools in Elat with ADAS, uh, we thought that the best formats that could be relevant for us are community-based projects, online exchanging, uh, training with other youth and exchange of knowledge because it's uh, things that we are sometimes uh, already doing and we want to expand it and, and bring more opportunities to our youth in Elat in the international scene. So as you can imagine, uh, in Elat, we want to focus on ocean literacy, aquaculture and coral restoration, since it's a specialty that all schools have here as well. There are schools uh, growing corals, talking about coral restoration. So we really want to exchange with other schools on these topics. We are also active in uh, creativity and activism. We have art teachers already doing that in the city and they really want to exchange with all the youth uh, around the world. And as I mentioned, it's important also for us to connect our youth to green skills and entrepreneurship, to give them more opportunities and be included in the vision we want uh, for the city. Uh, we also work on the transition from the culture of consumerism to eco-responsibility. Uh, the reduction of food waste, bird migration, because as you may know, Elat is a key place for birds immigrating. So we also want to propose this uh, topic. And of course, uh, energy transition. You may know that uh, in Elat already, 100% of our energy during the day is from solar energy. So it's also important for us to have students understand what it means and what, what are the stakes and the opportunities. So in the pictures, you see uh, our work, we work with partners and we, we love cooperating with other organizations as well. So we are very looking forward to being in touch with you, discuss further, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Salome. That was so colorful, uh, just like Elat. So I hope uh, many, many projects will come out uh, from this presentation. And now I would like, uh, I'm not sure if we have our colleagues from Akshava Tova here. So we're going to move on to Nalagat. Uh, I'd like to invite the CEO, Oren Itzhaki, to, pre to present uh, their proposals. Hi, I just want to see, you see my presentation? Yes, maybe um, change it to presentation mode, yeah. Now you see that? No, actually, now we still see the... um. We don't see it in present. Now, and, okay, now we see what you see. Yeah. <laughs> you have two screens, right? Yeah. So okay. first you need to change it to presentation mode, and then you do share screen, and mm -hmm. then you choose uh the the presentation mode slide. But now, 
this is what's happening. You need to stop sharing. Uh, try try to share again and now uh, and and choose the slide that is that's on presentation mode no it's happened again again What you see now? Sorry for everybody. Sorry. No, it's fine. Uh, we see your your presentation, but not on presentation mode. In English or in Hebrew, you see that. In English. Oh, okay. So I think we will not uh, over continue in that way. Okay, but maybe change it to full screen because we see a presentation within a presentation. No. I know what you can do. You can you can disconnect the second screen, and then it will be fine. Now, now you see the whole one. No, we see like what you see the and now what? No, but I cannot connect it. But yeah. <laughs> hey, I brought my help. I'm wearing it. Okay. At the moment, we said, "Act." Take a step forward. The message, and we call it what we see. יהיה לכם כמה ריבועים. לא, אל תצאו מההצגה. תשאירו את זה על הצגה. לא, אבל קודם תעשו את זה על הצגה. תשנו את המצגת למצב שהיא מציגה, ורק אז תעשו share screen. עכשיו, בשare screen תבחרו את מה שאתם רואים את המצגת שלכם בגדול. אין את זה. תוריד את זה שנייה למטה. Oh, okay, it's there. Oh, okay. So nice to meet you. <laughs> I'm Oren, I'm the CEO of Nalagat, and I waste a lot of time, so I would try to, to go ahead. Nalagat, if uh, nobody knows, it's a culture center. It's a nonprofit organization. It's a culture center that works with people with sensor disability. to promote and to increase knowledge about blindness, deafness, and of course, what we are doing here is about inclusion. The problems or the, the, the subject that we're dealing with is about why still in 2024, uh, disabled people are not part in the culture scene in Israel and, and, and all over. Uh, there is some, some reason that we are thinking about, uh, but uh, the biggest one, you know, if we're talking about culture, is there is no a school for art for people with disabilities. That way, there this this door to to involved in the in the work uh, the artwork uh, is closed for them because if an actor is is uh, is he needs to be professional, so he must go to learn it, and there is nothing about it in in Israel and all over the world. That reason actually we opened last year the first school in Israel and in all in the world uh, that's doing uh, art um, or stage. Uh, acting stage uh, for people with a sense of disability. So, what I said is, Nalaga tried to do social change um, with uh, arts, arts uh, activity that we are doing here in Nalaga, and actually not 
not in, in not in Nalagat, it's all over Israel and outside Israel also. Uh, we are in three projects in Erasmus. One of them is uh, Theater Without Borders. The second one is Occlusion by Art. And the third one is uh, Safety Internet for Young People. Uh, this is the only one. It's not uh, connected direct to art, but again, the workshops that we are doing to teach uh, schools, to, to teach kids uh, about safety is by uh, acting. The Naragat have 100 explorers, 70% of them are people with sense of disability, deaf, blind, and deaf, blind, to disability in the same body. Um, our business model is very unique for a nonprofit organization. So we are, know how to do, to bring most of our budget by our, our self funded. And this is Naragat, it's launched in 27. And as I said, it's an equal meeting space between people with sensor disability and the general public. We are not working for people with disability. We are working with people with uh, disability for the general public. I will type on. Unique, uh, kind, uh, unique uh, place. Uh, that uh, actually we are the only place that have a stage that people with uh, uh, deaf and blind have a chance to work on stage. It shows the working for more than 15 years. Uh, we have uh, many values that of uh, activity. Um, we are still, Tolerance. Uh, what we are doing here, the the main thing is to to try to do social change by our breaking boundaries at first. Uh, we have, except of the theater, uh, we have the black restaurants. Uh, there is twelve, I think, uh, black restaurants all over the world. It's like and all the waiters are inside our uh, blinds. We have the Capiche, it's the event center for uh, that all the workers are, are there. And the workshop center uh, that uh, involves the uh, guides uh, blind or deaf that going outside for schools to meet the uh, kids, to teach them about their life, to, to, to give them experience about the uh, blind and deaf. This will be short film. How a director walks with an actor that cannot see him and cannot hear him. This is a timeline by touch. This thing and Malagas in the English touch. This is the only place that we allow to touch. Remember, this actor cannot see the actor. So we have a unique way to work with actors. This is what we are offer actually for organization to spread our knowledge. This is our uh, refer to theater repertoire. Um, again, we are not working only about accessibilities here we are about what i said about integration and this is what we are looking we are looking for organizations that work to to work about integration about to try maybe to to involve people with disability in their organization of course it can be a art uh, organization but it's not need to be only art uh, we are a lot of uh, our uh, friends from Europe that work are not coming from the art field. Um, but that is, this is uh, actually a thing that we are working to do a bigger uh, impact about uh, our activity. Thank you very much. And sorry for the 
delays. No problem. Thank you so much, Oren. And uh, I think you were very modest because I, I Nara Gat uh, did amazing things with Erasmus and uh, and independently as a, as an outfit, we weren't even in touch, and we were so happy to find out about all this activity and connect you to our network, which is very large. And I'm sure that more projects can come out of this acquaintance, and I'm sure that we can even do more. So thank you. And uh, now I'd like to invite uh, from home base, Galit uh, Strussman, uh, Resource Development Manager. Hello, Galit. everyone. Do you hear me? Yes. OK. Oh, sorry. Now, now we don't hear you. Can you unmute? Okay, so Galit will start in a bit. Uh, after her, we'll have a presentation by Shutafim, uh, and then we'll conclude uh, our day. So Galit, whenever you're ready. Sorry, yeah, I'm ready now. Had a problem here. Um, so hello, everybody. I'm from the NGO home base. Uh, we're an NGO uh, in Israel that we started by working with uh, uh, people experiencing homelessness in uh, Tel Aviv, started playing soccer with them. And after a while, we uh, built a model, a unique model, and we uh, became more professional at what we do. And I think we expanded uh, in many very different ways. Uh, now we have a group for adult uh, soccer homeless uh, people in Tel Aviv and in Jerusalem as well. But we also open groups for youth, uh, for young people between the ages of 18 and 25 living on the streets in Jerusalem, and also um, for youth um, between the ages of 12 and 18 in order to try to not um, uh, let them become homeless in the future. Um, and besides that model of the soccer groups, we also have a choir for women in Tel Aviv, uh, a project of Friday night dinners for homeless uh, individuals in Jerusalem, and um, uh, a lockers program in Jerusalem that helps uh, homeless individuals uh, to keep their belongings and to be able to not only survive, but also build things needed. What it, it, it's very, uh, we do very diverse things, but I think what is in common and what we find in common is that we believe that one of the biggest privileges a person can have is connections and the ability to make connections. Uh, not only coming from a strong place from home, but also learning over there how to create those connections. And we see ourselves as a, um, like a, shift that helps them come from one to side to another because we do not do the rehabilitation we do not uh, employ them but we do make the connection build the connection and accompany them through those uh, other uh, procedures that we would hope that they would go through and we help to connect them to so i think that is something that we do very well we do the connections and we help them feel a sense of belonging and also we use the group that we build with them uh, if it's on the soccer field or is if it is in the choir and um, and we help build those connections and give a sense of belonging and a stable uh, thing that they're part of. And then we try to use that stableness and those connections to uh, help them engage in other um, aspects of life. But on the other side, we also believe that we need to help the society to also let other people be part of it. Um, we don't, um, for example, the Friday night dinners that we have, they're open and we try to also have people from the outside, like for, from the more normative world, come and engage with them and learn how to uh, deal with more diversity and people from different backgrounds. Uh, so what we are looking for now is also to expand in a few ways. One thing is if we can have any collaboration, like a lot of times we don't have the appropriate program to connect our people to. A lot of times there isn't a place that will employ them in a way that is 
uh, relevant and appropriate for them, or we don't have a place that we can uh, send them for education that is um, appropriate for their conditions and for their background. So that is one aspect that we are looking for. And the other one is, um, well, right now, because of the situation in Israel, we believe and we want to offer our model to um, all the displaced communities uh, in Israel and help strengthen that sense of stability and belonging and a sense of uh, like a little bit normality in these crazy days. Um, and we want to offer this these this model to uh, the kibbutzim and stewot and all the um, from the board like the otefaza. I don't know how to say that in English, but the, the from the, the cities and um, municipalities that are close to Gaza. Um, and that is the second way that we are looking to expand. Uh, I'd like to show for a second just what it does. It's a bit different maybe than what we've seen, but I think it it just shows it so clearly. Um, so if you don't mind, I'll share for a second. Um, this is, uh, I'll just say this is a video about our uh, adults group one of the participants, but it is very similar to what we do with young and youth. Um, do you see my YouTube page? I'll open it. Yes, we see it. Thank you. Galit, could you maybe uh, share again? Because we can't hear the audio. You can't hear the audio. Thank you for saying that. Just a second. Let's do that. And I think you should reshare, and then you have a little place to tick to share the audio. OK, thank you. Oh, I see it now. אין מילים איך להגיד תודה לעמותה הזאת. כל דבר שאני אעשה או אגיד, זה לא ישתווה למה שהם עשו בשבילי. Home Base is an NGO that is meant to bring the homeless population back to society. So now we have five different activities in uh, three different cities. החיים שלי היו מאוד up and down. הטראומות שלי זה משהו שאי אפשר להסיר אותם. זה לא לקרוע איזה דף מהמחברת. אני במקרה שלי, אני עברתי את האמצע, מה שנקרא. Amir was really desperate from life. He stayed in a shelter. He had no connection with his kids. He had problems of paying to his ex-wife. We believe that if we can create a good uh, connection eye to eye between us and the homeless people, this is the key to bring them back to society. We have uh, soccer teams, we have a choir for women, we have a lockers project, and we have uh, Friday meals. אוויר לנשימה בשבילי, לפגוש את כל החברים, חיבוקים, זה מעבר למשחק גדורגל, יש לנו את החברותה הזאת. בתור ילד היה מאוד חסר לי, ופה אני מרגיש שהם כאילו המשפחה שלי. אם היית אומר לי בתקופה הזאת שהייתי ברחוב, שאני אי פעם אעבוד באפל, הייתי אומר לו, עזוב, עזוב. שוב פעם תודה. תודה זה מילה קטנה. 
ארבע אותיות, אבל בשבילי זה מילה עם משמעות. So thank you for everyone. I'd like to add after this video only that the connection to Apple is only a small uh, example for something that we would love to, to make expand and that is something that isn't very developed in Israel. Um, it was a specific uh, situation that turned out well, but we are looking for something that is more built and um, could help more people engage in employment. So thank you. Thank you, Galit. Indeed, very, very impactful, interesting. And I, I think that collaboration with academia, with other um, stakeholders here in Israel, and of course, through Erasmus grants or projects can have a lot of impact. And now uh, we'd like to invite from the Center of Jewish Impact and Sasa Seton and Alumot Or, uh, Ms. Liron Koret, Director of International Outreach. Liron? Yes, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to meet you all. And um, it's really cool to see the landscape of civil society organizations that exist here. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm going to attempt, I don't know if this has been attempted before, but to present three organizations in about five minutes. Um, each of them are so unique in the world of their own, um, but they're all part of the social impact that we have here in Tel Aviv. Day to day, I work at the Center for Jewish Impact, but I'm also in, uh, in charge of the national outreach of our two other nonprofits, uh, Alumoto and Sasa Seton. So I will uh, quickly uh, present each of them. Um, I will also add that all of these organizations are newcomers uh, to Erasmus. Uh, so this is mostly just to introduce you to the opportunities here and our added value. So um, our first organization is called Sasa Seton. Sasa Seton is, a leading is leading education and building resilience for hospitalized children in each of the 41 schools within hospitals across Israel through a unique and bottom-up process. So Israel is the only country in the world that has the free education for sick children's law, meaning that every hospital in Israel has a school and a teaching staff um, and really uh, an operating school system. And this exists in all kinds of hospitals in Israel, whether they're general hospitals, psychiatric hospitals, or palliative care. And where Sasa Seton enters is it collaborates with the Ministry of Education to support education, build resilience um, to hospitalized children um, in three specific ways that with our knowledge and what we're proposing here is to either support in each of these specific points or even offer a comprehensive uh, support there. So we have uh, special activities tailored to hospitalized children uh, led by trained instructors. So for example, we train juggling instructors, photography instructors, art therapists, et cetera, to support hospitalized children during their hospitalization uh, period. And these trained instructors are not only uh, spe uh, specializing in their own field, but we also train them how to work with hospitalized children. Um, in the general hospitals, we also have uh, national so service volunteers that basically extend the school day from uh, after 12 o'clock um, to really support uh, the children hospitalized there. And what they do is that they offer tailored learning units uh, for hospitalized children, both online and offline content. So we have created our very own learning kits. Um, they are in four languages currently. So Hebrew, English, Arabic, and Ukrainian, um, but they can also be further expanded. And they are basically the idea is that a hospitalized child, when they learn, they can't really like they while they do have homework and, and big assignments or things that they're that they are taken out of their routine. Um, there is still that need to really give them a respite from their illness and give them some um, chunk of uh, small chunk activities. So we our kits include, for example, a microscope, a microscope that can be added to an iPhone and they can do some scientific experiments or art activities and so on. And we also have a full um, uh, platform of online content, such as uh, digital escape rooms, digital activities, 
Um, and it's also worth noting that because especially, I mean, the Israelis here know this, but hospitals are really a meeting place between people from different cultures, backgrounds, ethnicities, religions, and our activities are also designed to build bridges um, between hospitalized children there. So that's about our tailored learning units for hospitalized children. And we also, and this is a signature aspect of Sasa Setan, is these bottom-up designed innovative learning spaces of excellence. Each hospital, this is designed as a bottom-up process uh, with the hospital staff, understanding the needs, the requirements, the, the challenges um, in each hospitalization type. We create these innovative learning spaces that, um, that range from um, procedure preparation areas where, um, where there's a room to help the child um, prepare for their upcoming procedure from digital learning about it to actual like uh, dolls to prepare them for to prepare them for the procedures. Um, for example, um, in our we operate in a anorexia unit um, in one of the hospitals here in Israel, and we created for them an art space. Um, and an art studio, there's a cooking class, uh, cooking studio and a different uh, hospital a maker space. It's really unique for each hospital. And um, while most uh, the majority of our activities there uh, are here based in Israel, the model has already been exported once to Ukraine, uh, cooperating with the largest children's hospital in Odessa, Ukraine, giving them really the whole package, translating uh, the materials into Ukrainian. Um, and we are really happy to expand that further um, in any organization, educational body, uh, country that is really interested in expanding their in-hospital education. And also this is um, a late, like a latest development. We are building tra uh, trauma treatment centers for affected children uh, in cooperation with Barzilai Hospital. Um, and uh, it combines psychological support and education tailored to the child's condition. Really since the Gaza war um, erupted, um, they're already, um, this hospital deals with like, while there are hundreds of thousands of children who are affected by, uh, psychological, uh, needing psychological treatment, Barzi Lai Hospital um, responds with the children that need um, psychiatric hospitalization. And right now we are talking about 150 to 200 children a week. Um, so the so Sassan is supporting this initiative um, in cooperation with the Anna Freud Institute for Trauma in London. Um, but this is another pillar of knowledge that we are happy to export. Um, so that is uh, a little bit about Sassan, and it's really just the tip of the iceberg. Um, Alumot Or is promoting and implementing excellence program in special education schools through innovative programs focused on human on a human rights approach, supporting autonomy and transition to adulthood. So basically, it caters to learning uh, to learners with cognitive disabilities and at risk youth, um, ages twelve to thirty. Um, for uh, learners, for example, with autism. Um, 30 is still an age where there's still that um, aspect of transition to adulthood, which is delayed um, among those populations. Um, so um, that is an aspect of Alumot Or. Um, the, really, the idea is to implement a human-centered approach with the focus on autonomy, on the learner's wants and needs, and not the disability. Um, so thus, each student receives a tailored solution accounting for their environment, uh, Le Moto is uh, fully compliant with the CRPD, especially agenda items 19 and 24, and it operates within 15 schools across Israel. Um, using their expertise, um, we at Le Moto are really happy to export uh, three teacher, uh, sorry, four teacher training programs. So the first is the Rothman Fellows, which I think could be relevant both for schools dealing with special education, but also potential, potentially higher education institutions um, teaching in the field of um, special education. So Rothman Fellows is a year long training course for educators enriching their knowledge about special education with a human centered uh, approach. And that's already happening and uh, something that could be translated, exported and really giving an added value. 
Um, we also have a Holocaust education program for learners ages 16 to 18 with autism, which is also already taking place. And I think um, it's really, it's a really special and unique program because those students, um, one of them, when they started learning this program, they were like, wow, like if I were in the Holocaust, then that would have been, uh, I would have probably been one of the first people to go. Um, there's a training course for developing resilience and dealing with trauma and major cha life changes for special education learners. Um, for them, those changes are much harder, um, especially these days. And we have a course um, currently being developed. And also, and I think this also relates the aspect of financial mobility before um, special populations, we have a financial literacy program for children and young adults with disabilities uh, that is uh, in the final stages of uh, design, and we are happy to cooperate on that as well. Um, there's, as I mentioned, all of our schools are um, really focused on excellence, and um, we are happy to collaborate between these uh, our schools. And that um, they're divided between um, schools also with uh, children with autism at high and low functioning levels and as well as at-risk youth. Um, and finally, there's also knowledge sharing. So we're, we're developing a model for addressing challenges and blending students with disabilities into mainstream environments. So for example, integration, um, small classrooms or integration of uh, uh, learners with special needs in regular classrooms. So we're developing a model to really improve that and blend it. So we're happy to collaborate knowledge sharing there as well. Finally, uh, third organization is the Center for Jewish Impact. Um, this organization places a special emphasis on sports and education to promote tolerance and enhance the relationship between Israeli civil society, the Jewish diaspora, the global community. Um, we have uh, this organization, this is one aspect, one pillar of education, um, in addition to other aspects as well. Um, but we have two signature programs, and in the chat, someone asked about uh, collaboration in the field of uh, Holocaust. So I think that this might be a relevant avenue, which is uh, our one of our signature initiatives is called One Team, One People. Now it's in its third year. Uh, it's a program that uses Maccabi Tel Aviv's EuroLeague games across Europe as an opportunity to really discuss sports, the mean to promote tolerance, to promote Holocaust remembrance, and strengthen the relationship between the European Jewish diaspora and Israel. Um, so we've done that in uh, different cities uh, in Europe uh, in the past together with Maccabi Tel Aviv. Uh, basketball, but we're also planning to expand this project to other sports played in Europe. Uh, so we're in touch with the Judo Association, um, football as well. So really the idea is using sports, the players coming from Israel to collaborate with schools, uh, for example, in Europe, other communities, other aspects, and, and really exploring the potential for collaboration there, holding events to commemorate the Holocaust, mm -hmm and really strengthen this relationship. Um, and we're also developing a Jewish sports museum um, with the goal of preserving Jewish heritage and reducing anti-Semitic rhetoric and opinions by creating a, the first ever digitalized and centralized source of knowledge for that could be used by schools, sports teams, and organizations worldwide. Uh, so that was I Weekly Run, and together with me is Kim, who will be uh, supporting all of the International Outreach and Project um, and our Erasmus uh, accreditation and cooperation. So this is her email. I will also add my email in the chat. And thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Liron. And uh, last but not least, uh, from Shutafim. Uh, yeah, Legozi uh, Abudi, head of the program. Floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Yael. I'm the head of Shtafim. I would like to also show you really quickly what this program does. It I will I want to show you a video. It is in Hebrew, but uh, it's really short, and I will uh, translate. So let's do that. And I'm, I'm sharing it without the sound intentionally. Um, so I can just tell you a little bit of what we're doing. So kids sitting, mom is saying, um, hey, do the dishes. I'm, 
I'm tired. I've been working all day. So, you know, what have you been? You've been working all day. What have you been doing? Like, what do teenagers do all day? They don't do anything. What do you mean? What do you do? We work. So this is a little bit of what Shutafim does uh, in terms of work. We work in different fields and areas um, in educational businesses run by youth, by teenagers. These are some of our special initiatives during the war. This is the balance board that we created for evacuated teens and children. Um, we renovated more than 100 computers uh, donated by companies uh, and um, started them, put them in hotels. Um, we um, manage and yeah, uh, just so many things. <laughs> Uh, events for uh, communities in hotels. We created these different types of educational activities in uh, Hebrew, Arabic, and in English, these ODT training systems, and all of these different things are done by, oh, also video editing and uh, content creating. So these are some of the things that our educational businesses do. Um, I want to share. Yep. Okay. So Shutafim is an Israeli home for educational businesses. So what we do is an educational business is actually a group um, of entrepreneurship employment venture operated and managed by the youth themselves. Um, it literally Shutafim literally means partners as we see the youth in as our equal partners in the educational business ecosystem. The youth students uh, are students in vocational high schools in Israel, sorry, um, under professional majors chosen fit for entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial transformation, meaning we took the professional major already existing in the vocational school and we added employment an employment venture and group social entrepreneurship to the already existing uh, VET training that exists within the school. Um, our impact purposes, we have three, they're part of the UN's SDG. One is fair and worthy employment for teens, um, youth within the VET system through work-based learning, which is our uh, primary system of working. Um, number two, finding sustainable and local solutions, meaning we demand of our youth and our businesses that they need our, their products and their services need to provide with solutions, environmental and uh, social solutions to the needs of the community around them. And um, three, developing entrepreneurship, leadership and technological skills for all the participating youth in our program, meaning you enter it when you're 16. When you leave our program at 18, you are better at management, you're better at marketing, you're better at explaining yourself, your confidence is better, your belongings to your school and your system and your community is better, and your self-worth uh, and value is higher. Um, our national network currently includes 42 um, educational businesses, currently mainly, mainly in vocational schools under the Ministry of Labor. Um, and we operate in all types of communities, um, Jewish, Arabs, we also have a, a couple of ultra-Orthodox businesses from all sectors and all walks of life. We do strive to collaborate with as many partners as possible. We have a lot of local businesses and different companies uh, from the private sector collaborating with us. And we just are finishing this really big project with the JDC since the war started. Um, Google that we that teach us marketing and stuff and many more. Um, our opportunities for partnership. We have two opportunities that we wanted to discuss. One is youth mobility. We actually already tried to start this um, partnership um, with an organization in Spain called the Mondragon. Um, they do co-ops that it didn't work for 
some reason. <laughs> um, and we, we would really like this type of uh, partnership um, because we, we really want to educate our youth and help them advance themselves and their knowledge in this world of social entrepreneurship, in training practices, in work-based leadership and project management. And so going into a place like a co-op leading um, vocational education training institutions, leading so social entrepreneurship academies would really fit us to take our students and learn from these type of institutions, which I know that many of them exist in Europe and that would be something that can really help us um, strive for excellence in with this youth, that most of it is underprivileged youth. We, we don't like to say it like that, but these are teen, teens that don't have a lot of opportunities to, you know, l expand their horizons and learn something new. Um, definitely not outside of Israel. We provide them with a lot of these opportunities in Israel. And I feel like this could be a great partnership and a way to expand their horizons for outside of Israel. Just for most of them has never been even a dream. Um, the second thing is our uh, second opportunity for partnership can be capacity building in is Israel. Our goal is to create these type of vet programs of social entrepreneurship and work based learning and employment gear skills for youth, which we already provide outside of the vocational schooling system under the uh, Ministry of Labor, because the Ministry of Labor really supports this um, this program and provides the most of the businesses with the infrastructure that they need to succeed in it. And that infrastructure does not exist in any other type of educational system, whether formal or informal, it doesn't exist. And we have been flooded with many, many um, requests to start this program in a variety of uh, educational institutions, but they lack the infrastructure. OK, so if in a vocational high school you already have the workshop and you build on that workshop, right, you have the training system and then you just need to make that jump into employment and into entrepreneurship. It's a it's a hard jump to make, but we already know how to make that. We've been doing that for seven years and it's going really, really well. But if you don't have that base, it's really hard to make that jump. So what we're offering um, is a partnership in order to create that that base in other types of educational institutions, um, which I think can be again that we already have dozens of requests for that. Um, so that's our program. We would really love to be in touch with any European partner that can see themselves in any of those uh, fields. These um, this is my name and uh, phone number, email address, as well as my uh, co-director Woven. Uh, yep. That's it. Thank you, Elle. And I see already Lida has um, given a comment with the reference that she thinks is relevant for you. Uh, so uh, that's a good start. And also you have us at the Erasmus office if you need help finding partners also here in Israel or reference. We do. We actually we do. It. <laughs> so let's meet up. Uh, I want to thank everyone, everyone that survived. <laughs> it was very interesting, but it was very long. Uh, so thank you all for being here. I want to say that uh, there is a very lively Erasmus network, and I invite all of you to be part of it. We have our social media, we have our WhatsApp groups, and you can always contact us at the National Erasmus Plus office. Uh, we'll share our email here again. Uh, but know that you're not alone, and if you're looking for partners, and if you're thinking of collaborations and projects, then you have people to work with. You don't have to deal with it alone. Of course, you do have to, you know, make the proposals and 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 do all the um quality work, but but you can but if you need references or if you need connection or if you need peer learning, then it's something that we do here at, at the National Erasmus Plus office. Um, uh, does anyone have any question maybe uh, something they would like to discuss with someone who is still in, in the room. Ali, oh, I see you're here. Do you want to present? Yeah, I don't think we have time left. We have about seven minutes. Seven minutes is fine, if you yeah, want. I can, I can send you maybe a presentation later on to share with other 
Parker. Okay, so I'll just say that uh, we have here that she was she had some difficulties, but uh, we have here Leo uh, Davidi from uh, Machshava Tova. Uh, no, no, not from Machshava Tova, from Afa Academic College. Ah, okay, sorry, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll take that out in editing. So <laughs> I, I think I I need a break too. So thank you all for being here. And uh, and uh, have a great day and hope you have a lot of great quality applications and the upcoming uh, in, in these call for calls for proposals and before the deadlines in the summer, early February, summer, late March. So I encourage you to uh, go back and see what's relevant for you. Find your partners and uh, and have wonderful uh, projects. And have a great uh, day and a quiet day here. Something that we add recently. Uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank Thanks. you.